Hello everyone, good afternoon. Uh, I hope you're not too cold. And I really hope that you enjoyed your lunch today. Uh, if you didn't have time for lunch, I just wish that you're not going to be hating me throughout my speech because, uh, I mean, I'm a chef, I'm here to talk about food. Uh, you know, usually after you finish lunch in a restaurant, I'll come to your table and ask you a question. So please raise your hand if you feel like having a hot beverage right now. That's even less of what I was expecting. I, I think there's like one third or even less, like one fourth of you raise your hand right now. So I'll tell you a little bit later why I was asking you this question. But for now, let's just concentrate on food. Food is like my biggest addiction, is my biggest love in life. Uh, I love food so much that 14 years ago, I left my beautiful family that you might be able to see here in the picture. Uh, I left them behind and I decided to leave and pursue my career as a chef in France. And, you know, the idea of becoming a chef uh, was a little bit deeper than just learning how to cook food. You know, grandmothers, mothers, a lot of people cook food, but food has this beautiful thing about it. And thankfully, since everyone here eats food, you'll be able to relate to this feeling just by doing a very simple exercise that we're going to do all together. So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and try to imagine your favorite food as a child. As simple as that. Just try to imagine that food. Once you have it in your mind, just enjoy it for a couple of seconds. And whenever you're ready, open your eyes again. Now, I'm sure 100% that you did not picture simple food or anything. You went back to your childhood and you imagine yourselves having a meal with your mother or grandparents, uncles, cousins, or a friend or someone close to you back when you were a child. Um, and I can put my name and my hands on the fire that you didn't imagine something like this. It's not a blank picture uh, on the background with just a simple image of food because food is an experience. And that's the idea of what I'm trying to tell you here. Food is not just about eating. So when you did the exercise, I can guarantee you that you had in mind, um, you know, a place, uh, you imagined like a, like a small movie, you know, like in my head, when I do this, I can see myself in my living room early in the morning. So, you know, the first rays of sunshine coming through the window, uh, there was some music, some Cuban salsa playing because my dad used to love to make that. Uh, my family was there. We were all wearing pajamas. Bogota was cold, like this place where we are right now. So not in, in a shirt with short sleeves. Uh, and the smell of the food, the smell of the house, the whole atmosphere, like everything will just start getting and create like a small movie in your heads. Now, if you close your eyes again and you try to specifically go to that moment and imagine the food, the texture, the crunchiness, the flavor, I can guarantee you that most of you have your mouth watering right now, or you're having goosebumps or any other sort of emotion, because what is happening in your minds right now has an, uh, sensorial and, uh, emotional print to it. And that is the superpower that food has. And no one gives credit to food for that. It's, it's just amazing. That's why I left everything and just decided to go to a different part of the world. Now, a lot of you might not know this, but, uh, I had two beautiful chefs in my family. They were my grannies and uh, I'm half Colombian, half Hungarian. So I had both families from two very different cultures living in the same country, in the same city and being so different. There was always one thing that put everyone together. Um, and that thing was obviously family, not food. I, I'm sure that you were thinking about the word food, but that's probably because I've said food around 10 times since I started the talk. Um, now, family is also like a synonym for food because for me, food and most likely for you as well, because most of you are Indians and I know how important food is in your life. Memories of family go around food. I always meet my family for breakfast or for coffee or for lunch or for dinner. There's always some sort of food involved in it. And that creates memories that binds families together, that keeps people happy. I, I mean, look at my face. I'm super happy because I eat everything that I want. And as we're speaking right now, 
there are governments spending money in training chefs to make us make food for people and keep everyone happy so that there's not war or anything like that. No, I might be just taking it a little bit too far. Uh, maybe governments are not investing so much in chefs, but food makes people happy. And not only that, food makes people who they are. I mean, you've heard this sentence a lot of times, but like I have a little bit of burger here and I have a little bit of a pizza sandwich that I ate yesterday here on campus. Uh, so it literally makes us who we are. And I'm not ashamed of having a little bit of extra belly because every single bite that I've had of food came with its own experience and it brought me to this stage. So every decision that I've made and every single meal that I've had have brought me here to talk to you about this wonderful journey of experiences through food. Now, um, I'm going to be making something for myself that uh, I'm pretty sure that you can all relate to. Uh, wait, I'll just change my... <clears throat> so, I decided today to be a little bit selfish. You know, as a chef, you don't get the chance to be selfish. Today is my chance. I'm making myself some chai. Because cooking and food, as I was telling you, is an experience. And ever since I left home and I started working in France, it doesn't matter if I worked in a cafe, in a Michelin star restaurant, in whatever it is, we're looking for something else than just food. I mean, in today's society and life, eating is not about survival anymore. We crave something else. You can call it, um, I don't know, a smoking salad coming into the living room and you're just like mind blown, like what is the chef doing? Uh, it might be someone using a traditional ingredient in a very different way. Or maybe like most of the people here today, when you're a student, value for money, it's extremely important as an experience. You want the most out of it, the best way prepared possible, and it doesn't hurt your pocket. So 13 years ago, I was in the south of France, counting every single euro that I was spending. So I had this program where I'll save money. And if I manage to save 10 euros at the end of the month, I'll give myself a gift. I'll go to a special patisserie, like a very nice French shop and buy myself a 1.2 euro chocolat moelleux, like a soft chocolate tart and just have it sit down and enjoy it. Now, after having all the experiences that I've had in my life, if I go back to the south of France today and have that tart, I can guarantee you that I'm going to enjoy it as much as I used to enjoy it back then. Because there's a lot of emotion attached to that thing. So you guys, do yourself a favor or do me a favor as well if you want. Think about today and try to remember today's stock. After this stock, you'll go somewhere to one of these guys selling food or anything around. And you'll try to simply go with a couple of friends and buy some food. Uh, it might be a sandwich, a burger, uh, some chaat, I don't know, or some chai. Go, have that, enjoy it, and try to come back in five or six years or a little bit of time down the line, and you'll be able to remember and feel exactly how you'll feel today after the talk. So that's a little bit what I'm doing, and that's why I have this beautiful thing right here in front of me, because as a foreigner, I'm also a little bit attached emotionally to chai because it's something beautiful. Now, I believe that from everyone here, there might be at least 30 to 40 different techniques on how to make the perfect cup of chai because chai is so simple, but everyone is so damn specific about chai. Someone wants it with more milk, with less milk, with this sugar, with that sugar, with this and that, and just so complicated. And that's beautiful. Every time I go to someone's house, chai tastes differently. So today I'm making chai how I like it, how I enjoy it the most. Uh, might not be the most conventional way, but I think you can relate to it. So initially what I do is that I put a little bit extra water just so that I can infuse more flavors into my water with a little bit of sugar that I already put inside. I'm going to put ginger that I'm going to grate on top of it, some lemongrass and some fresh cinnamon. Um, this is exactly what I do when I'm doing this at home. Just because, you know, cinnamon, for example, I know is not the most traditional thing to put in chai, but it has so many memories in my life. Uh, it makes me feel like I'm in a warm place with loved ones. I don't know, cinnamon has that power in me. So since I'm a chef and I can do anything I want, so I just put cinnamon in my chai. Um, lemongrass is something that I usually always put. Lemongrass. Um, ah, there we go. And 
fresh cinnamon. I'm just gonna put a whole piece inside because I just love it. So I'm gonna let this infuse for a little bit. And um, I'll tell you a little bit later why I'm making all of these things. But the idea is all the spices that I'm using and everything that I'm doing here right now is just to create a perfect balance. That's the first shock that I got when I started having chai in India is that you have a cup of chai and it doesn't really taste like black tea. It doesn't really taste like milk. It doesn't really taste like cardamom or lemongrass. Every single flavor, it's perfectly balanced into a unique experience and a new flavor. So that's exactly what I'm trying here and what I'm going for. Just bind a perfect balance of spices that I love and create a unique flavor, a unique smell, a unique setup, right? I'm going to go ahead and put my chai leaves. There we go. So while this infuses for a little bit, um, I'm going to tell you the real reason why I'm doing chai today here. It's a little bit of an experiment and I'd be cheating. Uh, I already started cheating long back, but... Um, uh, there's a lot of things that I'm doing today here just to kind of make you travel to a different point. So um, a year ago, I invited my friend Carlos Velasco that you have on the screen right now. We practically grew up together. Uh, he's an experimental psychologist and he studies the way that our senses explains reality to our brain and how we understand reality. Because at the end of the day, our experiences are so different as human beings that we really don't know if what you guys are experiencing right now is the same thing as the person next to you. Uh, we live in different worlds. It's just depending on our senses. So we decided to make this dinner in Mumbai and make an experiment with the guests. We took 32 people as guinea pigs and uh, we told them a beautiful story. We're making a dinner. You'll be part of an experiment and this and that. And uh, we came up with the idea of changing factors of your senses that you're going to be experimenting and change the whole result of the dinner. So I think that most of you have heard like, you know, a perfect setting, a perfect place. It will change your experience and all of that. That's great. But how many of you really truly believe that all of the external factors will change your experience? I was not a believer. I thought it would be fun to play with all of these things. So we went ahead, we had 12 experiments and I'm going to tell you one of the experiments that shocked us the most, or at least me. Um, we managed to blindfold all 32 customers and we served them two shots of a non-alcoholic drink. And we told them, we're going to give you two different drinks. They got blindfolded and we played two different set of noises. While they were having one of the drinks, it was a very low pitched noise. When they're having the second drink, it was a very high pitched noise. Now, at the end of that specific experiment, everyone agreed on telling us that the second drink was spicier and more acidic because somehow the sounds that we listen to, um, all the nervous connections from our hearing are connected to the brain very close to where we feel flavor. So apparently certain set of noises can actually change the way that you taste things. And my mind was just going crazy. I couldn't believe that that was actually something that can be proven, that can be done to people. So having that experiment in mind, I said, you know, I'm going to focus a little bit more on giving people experiences and not just giving them food. And that's exactly why I came here today on a very cold day, because I think that you all are freezing as much as I am. Um, make some beautiful cup of chai because I know that you're all of you emotionally attached to chai as I am. I made you think about your childhood. I made you think about food. And even if you just had lunch, I'm sure that you're already craving for a little bit of food or maybe a hot cup of chai. So I made this. I just waited for this to be completely done, perfectly infused. I don't know how important it is for you, but for me also temperature plays a big, big, big role. So I'm going to go ahead, pour my chai here and all of this cheating, including one thing that I haven't told you, I sprayed the whole auditorium with some chai smell that my friends at the Good Scent made for me, just so that you could smell what I'm doing here, but over there next to you. And all of this cheating and lying, just to ask you one question, guys, and finish my talk with this. And please raise your hand if you're dying for a cup of chai right now. <laughs> Thank you very much.